Hello everybody, my name is Jared Britt. I'm the Director of Aviation Maintenance Training for Southern Utah University. In this video today, we're gonna to talk about how to become an AMP mechanic. Well, first of all, what is an AMP mechanic? Well, AMP stands for Airframe and Power Plant. And that represents licenses that you get from the FAA uh, so that you can practice aviation maintenance. The airframe allows you to work on everything except the engine. That's every system, every part of an aircraft, every repair on an aircraft, which is pretty much the whole aircraft, except the engine. And the engine is going to be the power plant section. And those are, those are divided up in your license as to what you can and can't work on. And it's not necessarily specific to what you can and can't work on. It's what you can, what you can and cannot return to service. And that's what being an AMP is really all about. It's about your legal ability to return aircraft to service after maintenance. Pretty much anybody in the world can work on an aircraft, but it's not legal to fly after they've done so. An AMP is the one that, that signs off that work, takes responsibility for that work. So that's kind of an overreaching idea of what, uh, what an AMP is, but why should you become one? Well, if you like working with your hands, you're, you like working on tractors, cars, motorcycles, mechanically inclined at all, becoming an AMP is about your, your knowledge and, and how much you want to work with your hands. There are AMPs out there that don't work with their hands very much at all. Uh, there are some that tear down engines every day and rebuild them. Uh, there are so many opportunities out there and so many different avenues of the industry that you could go into. Uh, the opportunities are endless. Um, once you become an AMP. So how do you choose your school? There's a lot of options out there for schools, but there's also ways to get your license that are not through an education institute. For instance, through FAA Part 65, you can work for 30 months in the field underneath an, uh, a technician, and you can be signed off to go take your tests. It's very difficult because a lot of companies won't bring you on uh, and take the risk of you working on aircraft without your license, but it's possible. The more uh, favorable direction that we suggest people do is go to a certified Part 147 school. A Part 147 is the FAA regulation that governs how the, the education has to be delivered to students. A certified Part 147 schools exist in two different avenues. One is a public institution and one is a private institution and a lot of times you're looking at the difference between a degree and a certificate of completion. So here at SUU we are all about degrees. We want you to get your degree. So we built our program, all 18 months of it that you go to school to get your AMT certificate, you're also getting everything you need to get your AAS degree. That way that you're, you're posed at that point to move forward into a bachelor's degree program. So right now the aviation industry is changing. And in order to be in any type of management or supervisory role in aviation, a degree is required. And that's happening more and more throughout the industry. So we encourage people to go the degree route. If you're going to spend the same amount of time, same amount of money, go the degree route and have that. The other option is to go to a private school and get a certificate of completion. Uh, that is an option for students. It's typically very fast paced. Um, it's probably a little bit cheaper, but at the end of the day, it's designed to get you in, get you tested and kick you out. We want to, to do more than just create a technician. We want to create aviation leaders. And in order to do that, you have to have that degree. So we suggest definitely going through and finding a degree program in your area that makes sense for you. How long does it take and what certifications do you need? Well, at our program it takes 18 months. 18 months to start to finish and includes your AAS degree. Um, and that brings you through your different sections of our program. Your first section is generals, gives you the basic general knowledge of all the different aspects of aviation maintenance that you need. Once you have that foundation, you're moving on to Airframe 1 and Airframe 2, which moves into all the airframe parts, pieces, and systems that you need to know to how to repair and how they work and how they function together. At the end of those first three semesters, you're actually eligible to test for your airframe license. And we do encourage students to go ahead and test for their airframe license. Your final two semesters are Power Plant, 
Power Plant 1 and Power Plant 2. Power Plant 1 is piston engines, combustion engines. Power Plant 2 is turbine engines. So you have an entire semester just on piston engines. And you have a, your final semester is an entire semester just on turbine engines. And at the completion of that, you are ready to take your power plant test. Um, once you've completed your power plant test, then you are now an airframe and power plant technician. And you're ready to get out of the job market and start working. What does the job market look like in aviation right now? And it is incredible. There are so many opportunities for technicians out there. I can't list them all right now. There are so many sectors in aviation that you can work in from rotor to contract, to commercial, to general aviation, to private aviation, to business aviation, international. There are uh, endless opportunities for technicians and your a and license is your ticket to the entire world. You can go wherever you want to go, wherever there is a U.S. certified aircraft. It has to have a U.S. certified technician fix it. And wherever aircraft are flying, they need to be fixed. The job opportunities are out there. And not only are they just out there, there is a deficit right now throughout the industry for technicians. Technicians are retiring in mass because they've all reached the age of retirement. And there's a large gap where these positions need to be filled. And these positions are from brand new technicians all the way into senior management. And that's again why we suggest having that degree so that you can start as a technician and you're work, work your way into senior management if that's what you choose to do. But also, if you just wanna travel around the world and fix things, that's also an opportunity for what, the, for what you could do with your career. Your first hire is going to be wherever you want it to be. You can work, you could go, you can choose your pathway. I wanna work in commercial, you go apply for jobs in commercial aviation. I wanna work in helicopters, you go apply for jobs in helicopters. I wanna work in fire, you go apply for jobs and people that have fire contracts with the government. There's so many opportunities out there for your first hire. You're looking at anywhere between 40 to $60,000 on your first job out of the gate. And that's growing every day right now because there's such a deficit in the industry and such a high demand and need for technicians that over the next 30 years, we don't plan for that to go away. It's just going to continue to increase. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment down in the description of this video. Subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time.